thank you for joining us today. Um, we have a brief webinar today called Studying STEM. So we're going to take a look at some of the STEM subjects that are on offer in the United Kingdom um, for specifically students from the US. But if you're not from the US, we're still very happy to help you. So just drop us a line if, if any questions do come up from your home country. Um, so we'll, I've got two universities here with me from the eight Welsh universities, University of South Wales and Swansea University. So if you guys would like to introduce yourselves, Tom, do you want to say hi first? Sure thing, yes. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Hill. I'm an uh, international executive uh, at the University of South Wales. Uh, I'm also a, a STEM graduate as well myself, so I'm uh, very eager to share a few of my own experiences as well. Yeah, and hi, uh, my name is Joanne Hopkins. So I work for Swansea University as the Regional Head of Recruitment for the Americas in Europe. Um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about engineering as part of this presentation. Brilliant, thank you. So I'll, I'll give you a quick overview first of just, you know, Wales, Welsh education, studying in the UK. Um, so just a bit of a crash course about how this works, um, coming from high school into an undergraduate program. Um, so first of all, this is where we are. We're that red bit on the map. Um, the whole of the UK is the dark grey island around us um, and a bit of Northern Ireland there. Um, I'd like to put, put this up because I think it's good to put it in context with what you know from the US. The whole of the UK is about the size of New England. Wales is about the size of Vermont. So I think when you look at a map and you think, oh, wow, that's really far away from cities I've heard of, like London or Manchester, it's really not. <laughs> um, I live up in rural North Wales in a national park, and I commute to London every Monday during normal times uh, to teach a class. So we're all really well connected. The train line here is fantastic. Um, I leave at seven. I'm in London by 10. I teach a three-hour class. I hang around for office hours. I get a nice meal with friends, and then I head back home. But I love where I live because I can see the ocean and the mountains, and it's about 70% less expensive than London. Um, so Wales in general is much more affordable than living in one of the big cities, but we have great access to these places, which is fantastic. Um, it's also really easy to get around the UK generally. On train, you don't need a car, and fuel is quite expensive here. So I think I lived here for about nine years without a car. That's fine. <laughs> um, and then flying to mainland Europe is about a two-hour flight. Um, and often it's more expensive to get to the airport than it is to fly to Europe. So it's, it's easy to get around. And getting back to the US is really easy as well. Um, we're all near pretty major airports. Uh, it's about a seven hour flight back to the East Coast and about a 10 hour flight to the West Coast, which sounds really long, but I drove six hours from Pennsylvania to Virginia for my undergrad. So I just kind of started teaching myself like, it's just a little bit longer and I'm saving a lot of money and getting to live in a very cool place. Um, so just different ways to kind of think about this. I, I should have said that too. I did my master's and my PhD in Wales. Um, I also spent a semester of my undergrad degree in Wales. So I definitely got obsessed with it. And 15 years later, I'm still here. So <laughs> we'll go through some of that. Um, I'll just whiz through these just so you can see a bit more of Wales. Um, this is Cardiff, the capital city. It does have a very London vibe, but it is on a micro scale. So it's, it's 350,000 people. It feels like a capital city. We have a seat of government, stadiums, theaters, restaurants, shops, cafes, all that stuff you would expect in a capital city, but you can walk across it in about 45 minutes. Um, if you do wanna to pop to London, two hours on a direct train, there's one every hour. It's easy to get around. Um, we have more castles per square mile than anywhere in Europe. So I feel like I have to always put one like this up just because this is what you picture when you think about studying in the UK. Like, yes, this is going to be around you. Um, there are four within 20 minutes of me, and this is one of them. And sometimes your classes are even in these buildings. Um, each castle usually has, excuse me, a uh, refurbished classroom. So our archaeology students will go there, our history students will go there. And if you don't have a class scheduled there, you can still take your books and just go read there. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time in castles, which is lovely. Um, we also have three national parks in Wales, and it makes up 25% of the country. So if you've heard about Wales, you've probably heard about the natural beauty. Um, it's everywhere, even in the center city campuses, within 15, 20 minutes, you can be in a green, gorgeous, beautiful landscape. Um, so it's just nice to know that this is on your doorstep for that space and freedom and, and beauty. I'm just going to go through this one briefly because these are the kind of main points that I think are handy to know. We don't want to go into a ton of detail in this session. The point is to cut through some of the confusion and just give you some clear takeaways. So the main thing when I'm talking to students about coming to the UK for a degree, why would you consider it? Shorter, more focused, cheaper. 
those are the three big points that we tend to kind of drive home. So they're three-year undergraduate degrees, one-year master's, and three-year PhDs. They're shorter because we don't do general education requirements in the UK. So if you're studying engineering, that is all you're going to study. There's no French requirement. There's no gym requirement. There's no creative writing requirement. It's really just your subject. You can take those other things for personal interest. Um, you can usually sit in on a class, just ask the professor if it's okay. Um, a lot of our campuses also have free courses just for personal interest. Like you can take any language for free. Um, Welsh language obviously is gonna be on offer. If anybody wants to pick up some Welsh while they're here, don't worry, everything's taught in English, but we do have a lot of Welsh around. So if you want to pick that up, um, it's on offer. So you can take those things for personal interest, but your degree, what you're paying for, what your grades are based on, is your subject. So because of that, we're done in three years. Um, master's is only one year and same, it's a 12 month program, quite intense, but no gen eds. So a lot of our US students do plan on staying for four years, but in four years you have a master's, whereas in the US that will take you six to seven years to complete. So more focused, shorter, and much more affordable. So when I was looking at programs um, in the US, the only two I really looked at were 48,000 a year and 52,000 a year. The school I ended up at was 11,000 a year. And after tuition, or sorry, after scholarships, I was paying 7,000 a year. And for that, we're a FAFSA school. So a bunch of unis in, the, in Wales are FAFSA. So you can use US federal loans to pay for your degree overseas. So I am in debt at the end of this, don't get me wrong, but I'm in debt about $35,000 at the end of a PhD. I was okay with that. <laughs> and I get to live in Narnia, so it's, it's pretty great. Um, so just the affordability side of it was huge that Yes, it was expensive to go to university, but it was a drop in the bucket compared to what I was looking at in the US when some of my friends are still going to be paying off for decades. And I got to have this amazing international experience. I just want to touch on entry requirements quick. Um, the best way to find out more details about entry requirements is to talk to your US champion. I have a list at the end of this presentation of the US contacts for each campus. Um, but overall, Wales is looking for the same thing. It'll just be a different number. Um, for GPA kind of a thing, depending on which campus you go to, which program you're looking at. So the main thing we're looking at is your GPA. We want to see what level of classes you're taking. Um, are they AP, IB, honors? So what, what level are you challenging yourself and how are you doing in those? If, you're if you have taken the SAT or the ACT, we'd like to see it, but we understand that that's been very hard to do this year. And going forward, we want to be a bit more test flexible. Um, so if you've done standardized tests, please do send those along. If you haven't, don't panic, just contact your US manager. We're all trying to be test flexible now. Um, and then same with APs, subject tests are no longer being given. So if you've taken them, we wanna see them, but if not, don't stress. Um, AP exams, if you've sat those, we'd like to see those. If you've taken any community college classes, we'd like to see your transcript from there. Um, if you've done any comparable work or work that might, um, give a little bit more experience to you, put that on a CV, tell us about it in your personal statement. Just make sure we have all the information to show that you are informed, knowledgeable, and a bit experienced in that area. Because you're jumping straight into your subject and British students focus so much sooner, we just wanna make sure that you're going to be capable and competent in that area. That being said, also talk to your US rep um, about your GPA if it's not 100% what you wish it was, because I have accepted students that were a 2.8 GPA, and our, our minimum was a 3.0 when I worked at a specific university, but they failed like gym and chemistry, and they wanted to study creative writing. So if I'm able to look at your transcript and see that you have straight A's in the subject that you wanna study at a high level, I'm, that's gonna fill me with a lot more confidence. So it's worth have, having that conversation with the US champion to just see what we can do, because it's not about like, oh, how can I work the system? It's, am I confident you're going to be successful when you arrive here? So we want to make sure we can look at that transcript and transfer that over to being here and having you be a success at our campus. General overview. <laughs> um, I'm just going to speed through these because we just talked about each of these, but I did want to touch on letter of recommendation. We only require one, and it does need to be from somebody who is from that field. So if you have a better relationship from like an English professor, they can always send a secondary reference along and it can be attached to application, um, but we need that one reference to be from an academic in the field that you want to study with us. Personal statements are also very different over here. Um, I mean, my undergrad one I wrote about summer camp, 
people write about their moms. <laughs> it's very different over here. It's very much like a cover letter to a CV or a job application. We wanna know that you have done some preparation for this course, you've done some research on this course, you know a bit about what you're getting into, you understand the field and the industry that you're getting into. Tell us about any experiences you've had, any journals that you've read, any independent work that you've done. Excuse me. Um, so just making sure that you're really telling us, this is why I wanna study engineering. This is the experience I've had. This is what piqued my interest. This is why I'm prepared to do it. Tell us about that. Um, there's also a lot of videos and things like that that can help you kind of hone that, that message. So do make sure you check in on that. Um, and then just a few last bits, um, just some pictures of our campuses, because yes, we do have a lot of buildings that look like Hogwarts. Um, this is from Aberystwyth University. Um, we also have a really vibrant campus life on all of our campuses. So student support, we'll pick you up at the airport, we'll bring you back to the dorms, we'll tell you how to open a bank account, how to get a doctor's appointment, don't stress about the how to live over here stuff. We help you with all of that. You just need to decide if you like the location and the program. If you like those two things, put it in the application and then we'll help you with the rest of it. So yeah, we've got dining facilities, um, clubs, societies. It is very similar to a US campus in terms of student life and activities. We also have on-campus accommodation. Um, pretty much all of our campuses in Wales have guaranteed on-campus accommodation. If they don't, then they have offices that work with private accommodation in the cities um, that can help set you up with the accommodation. The real perk here is that everybody has their own room. There's, I don't think there's any shared rooms um, <laughs> in Welsh campuses. Everybody's got their own bedroom. You pretty much always have your own bathroom as well. Um, and then you have shared common spaces like kitchens or lounges. Um, so this building is actually where I lived for four years and I was an RA. So it, it's, it's on campus, easy to walk around. Uh, there's 24 hour security. There's a mail room, a cafe, a shop, barbecue pits, bike sheds, definitely a student village, lovely community feel. So we're always there for anything that students might need in terms of support, but also just to give you a home. All right, I'm gonna stop there and pass over to Joanne and she's gonna tell us a bit about engineering. Lovely, thank you, Maggie. Um, so for, for this specific presentation, so it's about STEM, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics, I'm going to talk specifically about engineering. It's one of the things that Swansea is really well known for. But the important thing to know is that STEM subjects are available at all of the Welsh universities. So once you've decided what it is you would like to study, then for sure go on to the Global Wales website, have a look at all the universities to see what they offer, and then just start to drill down to see which one, um, which uh, course, which location is of most interest to you, reach out to your Wales champions and we will be able to, to talk you through the process. Um, and yeah, as I said, if you like the location, you like the programme, submit an application and we can help you through the rest. So on the next slide, it's just an image of the, uh, from the other angle of the Bay Campus. So our Bay Campus is home to our College of Engineering computer science, the School of Management and the Computational Foundry. So at Swansea, this campus was built back in 2015 specifically to house these programmes. So we do have two campuses. The other one is more for the arts and humanities and the medicine programmes. But for students who are interested in engineering, there's a lot, a lot of very impressive facilities on this campus, which helps students to get that experience alongside learning. So as for the full overview of engineering programs, <clears throat> it's aerospace, chemical, civil, electric and electronic, um, general engineering, material science, mechanical and medical. So as I say, there's a, a full range of courses available on all of the Welsh universities. And this is just the examples from Swansea. So on the next slide, we're just going to talk a little bit through about how do students learn who are studying an engineering program. And in Wales, we really put a lot of value and emphasis on students being able to do the practical alongside the theory. So we have all of the research labs, students get time in all of the laboratories, class sizes are typically small to make sure that all students have the ability to experience everything that's there. We do site visits, field works, guest talks. So we really try and make sure that students have access to a full suite of experiences so that when they graduate at the end of either their Bachelor of Engineering, their Masters of Engineering, that they, they know how the world works and they know what to expect from their careers and they're able to go into it. And, and also that along the, if students do the, the B-Eng Engineering, that the three-year programme 
and if they do the MNs, that's the four year integrated masters and students are encouraged to enter competitions along the way. So the mechanical engineering students may do um, robotics and enter into different competitions in that set type of field. Um, the computer engineering students may enter competitions to do with computer games design or something like that. But there's a lot of a lot of very interactive learning, shall we say. And one of the examples on the next slide is just for aerospace engineering. Um, so we have the simulation suites on campus and graduates from aerospace engineering can really expect to play a key role in the design, construction, tech, testing and maintenance of a wide range of aircraft. So it's things like flight safety, fuel efficiency, environmental impact, calculating project time scales, writing manuals and developing to new technologies. So for us, we work very closely with Rolls-Royce, Airbus, BA, BA Systems, GA Aviation. So students, and again, this is where those guest lectures come into play, that students can hear firsthand about what it's like to have a career in that industry and be able to experience it themselves. And then on the next slide, we just talk through um, some of the support that's available. So again, at all of the Welsh universities, we try to make sure that students have access to preparing themselves for a career in engineering. So employability skills days are examples of this, where we would have a company come in and give a panel discussion. There's opportunities for students to network, mock interviews and mock assessment centres. So alongside, for example, if students are in their final year, they're starting to think about, right, okay, next year I'm going to graduate. I really want to get a job. How am I going to go about this? Then there's opportunities for students to go along to these employability skills days that they can have a look through their CV, make sure everything is as up to date as it needs to be. And one of the most important parts of these days or one of the most valuable to students are those mock interviews and mock assessment centres. And especially for engineering students, that the assessment centres play a key role in students getting through to the interview stage. So it's just about having a practice go at it, settling the nerves, just making sure that you're comfortable with the environment. Um, and then for those mock interviews, that having the opportunity to, to run through what your example answer might be and get some feedback about what would be a really great example to be able to give when you go to that interview setting. And as part of all of this preparation work, there is the opportunity for students to do um, a year in industry, to actually go and work in industry as part of their degree. And on the next slide, it just goes through um, a little bit of information on this. So at Swansea, and again, at a lot of the other Welsh universities, there's the opportunity to do a year in industry. So some students will prefer to do just a two week um, work experience, but for others, they would like to build in a full year where they go out into the industry, they're completely employed by the company, they're paid for their time there, and they get to really get involved in a particular project or scheme so that they can start to build their CV. So but the, by the time you graduate, you could have your Bachelor's of Engineering or your Master's of Engineering alongside a full year of work. And a lot of times the students who take up the opportunity to do a year of working in industry, when they come back to the university, they're the students who get the top grades. They've seen it in action. They know how it works. They know how to apply it. So actually, when they come back to do their final year of study, it all clicks and they're able to just do so much better. And then by the time they graduate, they have the experience and they also have really good grades to walk into that role. And, and for students who are able to excel while they're doing their year of industry placement, that sometimes they're able to show those employers the skills that they have. And whenever it comes time to apply for jobs, that they stand a good chance of being employed in by those employers. So as part of the, the cycle through the university, we support students to get those placements. Obviously it's up to the employers who they employ, but at the end of that year of working in industry, students are invited back to then let other students know about their experience. So there's the poster sessions, there's awards, and it really is trying to encourage more students to take part in it each year and to invite the employers back onto campus so that they can see the new pool of students that we have that could take up the experience the year after. 
And then on the next slide, so it's about professional registration. So for any, for any students that come to the UK to study engineering, it's really important that they know that it is possible to transfer that degree back to their country afterwards. So the Washington Accord is something that has the international recognition for engineers and for the USA, that that is the ABET, the Accreditation Board for Engineering Technology, is signed up to the Washington Accord. And for Canada, it's Engineers Canada that have signed up. So it's possible for students to come to the UK, do their engineering degrees, and then transfer those back to North America again. And then I think I have one more slide, which just, um, it's just an image slide, but it's just to talk a little bit about examples of research themes. So alongside the undergraduate study, there's also the research that students can do afterwards. And, and even at an undergraduate level, to know the research that the professors are doing while you study, that sometimes it can really help students to decide what their path will be later. So some of the things we work on are things like wave energy, we also have, and specifically linked to our engineering, we have active classrooms on campus. So these are classrooms that generate, store and release their own solar energy. And as part of one of the summer programs we have in engineering, it's possible for students to do um, a summer abroad in a developing country where they bring this technology and make buildings solar in another country so that they leave at the end of the summer that there's a, a building there that can release enough energy for the building itself, but also sell it back to the grid so that it helps that building, whether it's a classroom, um, to, to support that community and, and to make it more manageable. Um, and then one of the other examples for medical engineering is wearable sports technology. So for um, rugby, we work with um, rugby teams to see the impact of head injuries in sports. So with a gum shield that can um, measure the impact of a head injury and then allow the coaches to see if that player needs to come off straight away. So lots of ways to, to bring engineering into the day-to-day -day life um, and just great opportunities for students to be able to see the research that they could do after they graduate as well. So yeah, so that's just a, uh, a kind of overview of engineering, and then I'll pass it over to Tom to, to talk about the rest of STEM. Excellent, thank you, Joanne. Um, that's great. So as, as Maggie and Joanne explained, obviously the session here is about the STEM subjects. So where Joanne has focused on engineering, I'm going to pick up just a little bit around uh, applied science, mathematics, and uh, we've bunked psychology in here as well. Okay, so when we're considering uh, computing, science, psychology, mathematics, and so on, uh, at the universities within the UK, specifically within Wales, then of course, we're, we're looking to focus on particular subject areas. So again, as Maggie said, we're not looking to do general studies uh, across the board. Students come to the universities here in Wales and they get to really start to unpick and dig deeper into those specific subject areas of their own interests. So, I, and again, just an example of what uh, we have, but again, a lot of these are seen across Welsh universities. You know, we've got computing, data science, cybersecurity, and so on. What's even better is that within these subject areas, if we have students approaching the university with even keener and sharper interests in smaller, more focused areas, then we can usually cater to those students as well. So I explained that uh, at the beginning of the session here, I'm, I'm a STEM graduate myself. So for my undergraduate studies, I, uh, I specifically focused into biology, but then even deeper down into international wildlife biology uh, for my three years studying here as well. I really got a good understanding of the, the depth of the actual focus and specialities there. I think what is really unique perhaps about STEM subjects across Wales as well is that they come with um, a particularly flexible dissertation, a, a final major project of the structure that we have here. So in the third year of undergraduate study or in the final term perhaps of a master's programme, uh, a lot of the STEM courses that we have in Wales ask students to start focusing on a research project of their own devising or their own interests. And again, that is usually something that is um, embellished within the rest of the program. But if students perhaps uh, have learned a little bit more about a smaller element and they want to 
I suppose, become part of a resident uh, expert in that field or walk towards that career path in the future, then students can use this opportunity of a dissertation to get a deeper understanding and usually use that as an example within their CV and resume when they go towards employers later on of having demonstrated their ability within that specialist area as well. And it's a really good focus, real, really good way to customize, I suppose, the courses to your own interests as well. So if we jump on to the next slide, uh, we'll have a little look at computing and mathematics to begin with. Uh, Joanne highlighted some of the very important elements of working with professional bodies, working with industries as well, to make sure that not only are students getting of course, that degree at the end of the three years or the one year's master's, that nice certificate when they graduate, but also having that industry understanding, uh, seeing the academic knowledge put into practice, being able to put it into practice themselves as well. But I suppose what's perhaps even more important or perhaps at least just as important these days is coming out of a university with a degree, but with a network, with a list of contacts, a little black book of addresses, of email addresses, uh, phone numbers and names and so on. So that when students do graduate, there are directions readily available for them to go into for employment. And again, perhaps returning to areas where students have been on placements, uh, had industry experience, or perhaps just using those networks to find out further opportunities later on down the line as well. Um, many of the courses across Wales as well ha are recognised by professional bodies, especially around computing and mathematics. So we're thinking about uh, the British Computing Society as an example, uh, Engineering Council, the Institute of Mathematics and so on. Now, these additional accreditations help bolster those resumes, those CVs a little bit further as well. So when we're graduating, going into particularly competitive areas uh, of industry, well, if we have not only a degree, not only the network to go along with it, but we've got these additional accreditations from these industry bodies as well, well, that's only going to give us a little bit more of an opportunity to land that job ahead of our competition at the same time. Uh, again, we have, uh, there are excellent links to help us tailor our courses to meet the employer's needs as well. So this is making sure that the course content and the curriculum is constantly updated. So this comes alongside things like uh, working to industry standards, ensuring that uh, we're keeping up to date with topical uh, requirements uh, and points of interest around our subject areas as well, making sure that what we are giving our students what we are teaching and training is relevant to the modern world in terms of the styles, the methodologies, the equipment that we're using and how we can actually implement that in the future. In terms of perhaps a research approach to things, well, we want to be looking at what the world actually needs, uh, not just Wales, not just the UK, but the wider kind of uh, spectrum of computing and mathematics. Um, as an example, uh, a number of years ago in the UK, uh, the NHS, unfortunately, was held ransom by digital cyber attacks and ransomware locked down a lot of the healthcare services that the UK has for its patients, which meant that a lot of people weren't able to access uh, services and treatment. Now, in response to this, the UK and Welsh government have established the National Cyber Security Academy, which is based around South Wales. And then a lot of the work that universities in Wales are doing are actually using the computing facilities, using their cyber security systems within the courses, within the course content of the uh, facilities to help combat future cyber, cyber security threats within the UK, but also help across the world at the same time. So it's a manner of keeping all of this research that we're doing, this course content relevant so that there is somewhere to use it in the future. Um, if we jump over to the next slide, we can have a little look at the applied sciences. So again, this is, this is where I was from originally. Uh, this is where we have our biology, our chemistry, our geography and our geology and so on as well. Now, a lot of this comes down to, again, catering to industry and hands-on uh, appropriate learning. So the facilities that we're learning throughout, uh, learning on throughout Wales, the laboratories, the field work, the excursions out and around the country and again overseas, all fold into the suitability and the employability skills that the students get when they come to graduate. So we're getting to use, again, industry standard equipment, 
Um, again, as an example, we have the opportunity to work with grade two uh, pathogens within whales. So things like E. coli, uh, which can be a little bit daunting when you're going into a laboratory and you're working with these active live kind of strands of these, uh, these pathogens. But of course, it's all in a controlled and professional uh, manner. So that when you do graduate and you go into industry, if you are tackling things as high magnitude as, as pathogens, as uh, you know, volatile chemicals and so on, that kind of daunting experience is, is dulled down a little bit because you're already familiar with the process. You're already familiar with the protocols and the equipments. So it's not necessarily a matter of jumping in uh, blind at the deep end. Uh, as we go on as well, we want to make sure that our graduates from the courses are acquiring the practical skills and strong knowledge, uh, which comes from perhaps a lot of the vocational elements that a, a lot of the universities in Wales provide. So whether these are, again, local vocational elements around uh, the countryside for our ecological courses or overseas and working with, again, uh, what Joanne was mentioning there about uh, the the climate control, the uh, sorry, the um, uh, green energy in the solar systems, we're building infrastructure as well. All of these vocational elements are putting the academic skill right into practice. So we know exactly what the chapters in the textbook mean when they're translated into reality. And again, that's what our career is going to be in the future. So that is a big focus on a lot of the content that we have here as well. Again, a lot of accreditations around the applied sciences. And again, as I mentioned, for computing and mathematics, those are the elements that give you a little bit more of a edge when it comes to employability. Again, very competitive in certain areas. So any advantage that we can take, well, we want to take them uh, to give ourselves a little bit of a boost as well. And again, how we keep these contents relevant, how we keep them up to speed, well, of course, we, we feed in from uh, international research, but we also have guest speakers come on in, people who are in industry, leaders and influencers in particular subject areas coming in and share not only their knowledge, but their own experiences of breaking into those fields as well. Um, it's all well and good being you know, academically competent in particular areas, but how can we actually put that into practice? Again, how can we generate a network? How do we get people to listen to us and then collaborate with us in the future? So all these skills that are being shared uh, by our collaborators, by our industry partners and our guest speakers as well. Um, if we jump on over to the next page, uh, we can have a little bit of a focus now on psychology and the therapeutic studies. Um, Strict, not strictly uh, a STEM subject, but again, it folds in very closely to a lot of the principles that we have when we're considering applied sciences and computing and mathematics and engineering as well. So again, when we're considering psychology, psychology is a nice kind of core uh, subject area to focus on, and it branches out into a range of different areas as well that we can kind of drill down into, which I'll touch on it in just a little bit of a second. Uh, again, uh, the psychology degrees across Wales, the majority of them are accredited by the British Psychological Society. When we are considering our accreditations, now a lot of these will translate across uh, to other places around the world, but it's always good just to have a little bit of a research uh, into the background of these um, accreditations yourself as well, just to make sure that they are relevant and applicable to your own pathway in the future and where you want to go uh, a little bit later on as well. Uh, we have our Psychology Plus scheme, uh, specifically with the University of South Wales, and I can imagine other Welsh universities uh, around the country have similar schemes, which I'll, I'll come to on the next slide in a moment. Uh, in terms of, I suppose, active research, again, this follows the same principle that all of our strands of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics have, that we're wanting to be tactical, perhaps, in how we approach our research, how we approach the teaching of our students, whether that's going to be the academic side, whether that's going to be the practice or the counselling or the therapeutic side. It all needs to be peer reviewed. It all needs to be assessed before it's actually put into the curriculum. And that's something that we do through, again, research collaborations internally and with external partners as well. The tutors that you work with will come from a range of different backgrounds. And again, that just uh, enriches that experience that you get. We have tutors who have spent their entire lives in textbooks, doing the research, uh, doing the academic, doing the theory side of things. We have uh, professors who have come back from industry. You know, they've been practicing therapists uh, for decades at a time, and they come back with their own experience. And again, very importantly, their own network of contacts for you to pick up and run with as fast as you can, you know, put into practice and make sure that it is used to its full potential as well. 
Alongside these, we have, again, particular centres, particular clinics and facilities. Um, again, a lot of the facilities across Wales uh, may very well also be uh, practising uh, in terms of how they treat patients as well. So again, at the University of South Wales, we have our uh, PARB clinics, so P-A-W-B, psychology and well-being. Uh, coincidentally, uh, PARB is a Welsh word for uh, everyone, so it's a nice kind of uh, encompassing uh, attitude that the team have there. But they're actively providing services to the community through, teach, uh, through treating uh, patients where our current students have the opportunity to oversee uh, and look in on these programmes as well and get their own experience at the same time. Um, if we jump over just to the, I think, the final slide here, and I'll briefly touch on to the, I suppose, the extended kind of depth of the psychology. So I mentioned the Psychology Plus scheme, and again, very similar, no doubt, with other universities across Wales. This is where students perhaps will come in, in the first instance, have an interest in psychology, and then have their mind opened to all of the branches and depths of psychology and decide that actually this is where I want to go, whether that's into something like um, tactical interviewing or counselling skills or clinical psychology, students can then start to drill down into particular specialist areas, customise their own course by picking up these additional skills, these additional courses, which the majority of are free of charge as well, they're just built in as part of the curriculum or the optional activities and extracurricular things. So that by the time they graduate, they have that direction. They have the understanding of what they actually want to be doing with psychology in the future. But more importantly, how that can be achieved as well. Uh, I understand that's, that's a very quick kind of overview of what we have here. So as always, feel free to get in touch, ask further questions. Uh, if you have them there, there are always people willing to give you the answers. You've just got to throw your hand in the air or drop us the email and we'll help you out with anything else that you need. Uh, I'll hand back over to uh, Maggie then. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, really helpful. We've got a couple of prompts here that I, I would like to ask you guys. Um, but just a few things I think to reiterate, just to streamline everything, is we, we know about the shorter, cheaper, more affordable, but I hope that really opened your eyes a bit towards the opportunities as well, because that is such a big thing here, is that industry experience, seeing things happening, being exposed to the research, so if this does appeal to, to you as a student, as an applicant, or those that you advise, the first thing I would say is reach out to that campus. Um, if you're not sure which campus to reach out to, my details are in the YouTube caption and all over the Studying Wells website. Um, I consider myself the matchmaker. So if you just email me and say, my student's interested in this, I can then introduce you to those campuses. Um, but have a chat with them because it's that one-to-one -one attention that you can get from a Welsh university introducing you to the professor, talking to current students, you know, looking in on a lab. If you're visiting, we can, you know, arrange a, a classroom visit and things like that to really have that exposure to see what's going on and how hands-on these programs are. It's completely inspiring. I was definitely not a STEM kid, uh, but every time I visit these campuses, it's just phenomenal to, to be exposed to some of the thought and idea and implementation that's happening. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my little plug for that. Highly recommend it. Um, also wanted to reiterate that you're in industry. It's quite unique, um, but it's also fairly standard across Wales. Uh, so you can definitely have that as an opportunity across the Welsh campuses and it is paid. So you do have a job for a year in the middle of your course, go back and finish your degree. And those students often are you know, in our 90th percentile being employed within six months. So definitely a, a key thing to, to sell there. Um, and the bit that I wanted to focus on too is just this employability thing that we keep talking about, obviously very key, but your student, and if you're the, the applicant, you don't need to know exactly what you want to do right now as an 18 year old. If you need to know what you want to study, you're declaring your major on your application, you're coming into a specific program. You do not need to know what you want to do with your life. <laughs> We're quite happy to help you uh, think about that and introduce you to different ideas. The first year of all of the courses in Wales are quite general within your field. You'll do research skills, writing skills, presentation skills, um, an overview of that subject area. So, you know, if you are studying psychology and you start with general psychology, but, oh, I'm really interested in neuropsychology by the end of the first year, it's fairly easy to switch within that department and focus in that field. Now, if you start with psychology and want to switch to music, you might have to start over <laughs> because it's a three-year regimented structured degree. Um, so just be aware of that. But I do just want to reiterate that it's general first year. You focus a little bit more second year into some more specific uh, focused courses. And then third year, as Tom was saying, 
you focus even more and you get to do an independent research project on exactly what floats your boat. You really get to geek out about what you wanna geek out about with that academic support and structure. Um, and then the transferability element is just, remember all these degrees come back to the US, no problem. The only things that can be tricky are certifications. Um, so just be aware of that. And, and again, reach out to your US champion. So sometimes it'll transfer back no problem at all. Other times you'd have to go back to school for two years. So it's good to know that <laughs> before you come into the program. It's the same as if you, you know, are certified to be a teacher in California and then you move to Oregon, you have to get recertified in that state and different states will have different requirements, but the degree transfers. So your bachelor's in psychology, your bachelor's in engineering, that transfers. Um, as Joanne said, our certification for engineering is recognized in the US and Canada, so that is absolutely fine. So just check on those certifications. All right, I'll pause for a moment. Um, can I turn to you guys? Do you want to pick any of, of these and, and highlight anything specific that you can think of on your campuses? Yeah, so I can um, start with the, the first one. So just in terms of student support. So um, a lot of what both myself and Tom talked about is, is the support that's available on campus and really trying to hone in on those skills for students to, to get a degree or a job at the end of their degree. Um, but it's just important to highlight some of the support that's available throughout their courses as well. Um, so academic support, so there's an academic mentor program, so all students are linked with an academic mentor from the beginning of their program, so they always have somebody that they can go to on a regular basis and just touch base, make sure everything's okay, make sure they're on track with everything that they're doing, but also, as you say, Maggie, that that mentor can help them to, to really explore what their area of specialization may become. So for students who just know, for example, in the area of engineering, it's just engineering they like they like science they like maths they're not sure yet which specialization that they will make that having that opportunity to to sit down on a regular basis with their academic mentor will help them to explore that a little bit further and have um, some advice on different things to look at different experiences that they can have that can help them find out um, there's also specific academic office hours so all of the professors will have either an open door policy or specific hours every week where students know that they can just drop by and check in on things. Um, there's also student reps. So every course has a student rep program when that student rep will bring forward any queries that the, the whole cohort have. Um, there's also support staff available for every um, subject. So those support staff could be um, uh, subject specific, so it could be that within engineering there's employability support officers that work specifically with engineering programs. It could be that it's um, advice and support to do with disability services, to do with any kind of support services. So throughout the full degree program, whether it's the three-year bachelor's or the one-year master's, there is a lot of support available to students and um, it's true across all subject areas, but especially within STEM. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I would also throw in with that is something we discovered this year is uh, the declaring of uh, disabilities on applications. A lot of American students don't do that for their US applications and that was news to us. You know, they, they hide that in the US because they see that it could be a detriment to their application process. That is the complete opposite for us. Um, so we really encourage you to, to declare anything on your application about a disability because that's so we can prepare for you to be on campus. Um, the example I often use is we had a blind student at my campus a couple of years ago applying and our staff was retrained in specific software so that blind student could study music and now they're staying on for uh, a master's. And we were able to arrange their visa to arrive early so they could uh, acclimate their guide dog to get from their dorm to their classrooms and things like that. It's purely about setting up the system to make sure that you're going to be successful once you begin. So it has nothing to do with your, your actual admissions process. Um, we do that for preparation. So yeah, just want to make sure that's out there in, in the world and every webinar we do. Please do. Don't feel bad about that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add here, Tom? The other thing, yeah, I, I think you phrased it out quite well uh, earlier on there, Maggie, when you said one-to-one -one attention. Uh, you know, John, uh, as, as John's highlighted, the um, obviously the mentor, the pastoral kind of support that the uh, teams put together as well, uh, which is great. I think um, if it's eking out perhaps additional value from this support, it, it kind of blends into the second point you had on the screen there about research as well. 
the beauty of STEM is that you see so many areas of collaboration. You know, mathematics isn't in isolation by itself, nor is engineering, nor is biology. They, they do overlap all together, which is great. Uh, you know, a prime example is, um, you know, you can look at mathematics and it can seem a little bit abstract and where do we apply mathematics? But if we're working in things like uh, climate prediction and control, as, as, as an example of one of the projects that the team here are working on, that then goes hand in hand with a lot of the geographers and the geologists and the ecologists that are working here. So we, we see those collaborations, the students get to learn more, they find out areas about different uh, specialities within their subjects. And that just comes from engaging with these academics, you know, having these one-to-one -one sessions, chatting, asking those questions that are on their minds. And that support is just there, like I said, all year round for the students to take, make the most out of. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I think the only other thing I would highlight here uh, is we have a lot more episodes like this. So, I mean, if you want more info, we're trying to scrape the surface and just cut through the noise and give you some really clear action points and contacts and things to think about. Um, but we specifically featured these two universities because University of South Wales has a webisode on our YouTube USA playlist that focuses on psychology. So if you wanna read, a, uh, watch a bit more about psychology, uh, meet Rich Stacy, one of uh, Tom's colleagues uh, and talk about what it is to be a student on that campus, you can check out that video. Um, and then Joanne and I did a video on uh, Swansea University and they focus specifically on engineering and speak to professors and students in the field. So you can hear some real firsthand uh, experience about studying that there. So do check those out. Um, we do obviously have a lot of other resources available, but I just can't encourage you enough to reach out and contact us. Um, it is very much a one-to-one -one attention and it is a case-by-case -case for most admissions. So while I can give you, you know, that really general entry requirement chat, it's so much in your favor to just reach out to your US champion and have that first conversation. Um, they can look over your transcript. We're all about transparency and they can say, yes, this is a very strong one. We would probably accept you or no, this is what we need to see. Do you think you could do that by your senior year? Um, so our whole goal is to just kind of help you make this process more clear and a bit more straightforward. Um, we're not trying to trick anybody. So <laughs> I hope this piques some interest. Um, I want to thank you both for coming along. Really appreciate it. And any questions or issues, do get in touch with us. We're studyingwales.ac.uk um, and all of our contact detail will be in the box just below. So thanks very much. And good luck. Thank you very much, thank everyone. You.